Hi guys, it's NSBYT and I've been using the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra as my daily device for roughly around three weeks now, or conveniently, 21 days. There's been some ups and downs, and to be honest, I've been both incredibly impressed and slightly frustrated all at the same time. We'll go over all of that, of course, so if you've come for the S21 Ultra lowdown, then I've got a galaxy of information. So the S21 Ultra is pretty much the best Android phone you can buy right now for reasons we'll touch on. But first, can we just address the achievements made by Samsung in producing an Exynos chip that over the last few years is finally comparable with the Qualcomm variant. In this case, the Snapdragon 888 and the Exynos 2100 here. You guys in the US, for example, will never truly appreciate the pain that we've been through in the UK and Europe, for example, going around with essentially lesser devices in terms of performance and battery life due to the difference in the chipsets used. But if you saw my previous video, the same sized 5000 mAh battery cell in the S21 Ultra performed significantly better than last year's S20 Ultra with the Exynos 990 chip. And early tests are showing that the Exynos and Snapdragon variants are performing very, very similarly in terms of battery drain. On top of that, the higher clock speeds of the 2100 CPU mean scrolling through your favorite social medias, browsing the latest news stories, and general all-round multitasking and day-to-day -day tasks may actually be slightly quicker on the Exynos model. Yes, the Mali G78 GPU is still a fair way off the Adreno 660 in the Snapdragon 888, so gaming, for example, will probably be slightly better on the Qualcomm version, and as a whole, it is a slightly better chip, but like I said, nice to see some relative parity for a change. And in terms of battery, I was underwhelmed with the S20 Ultra. I'm whelmed, if that makes any sense, with the S21 Ultra. It's an all-dayer, absolutely no problems. So the way I see the S20 Ultra is it's split into two different sections, the objective and the subjective. And I think subjectivity is sometimes overlooked in the tech scene. I think often tech reviews get too bogged down with the specs of everything and not actually going into the nuances that make each device individual and subjectively the best for the end user, you guys. So hopefully I'm gonna try and help with that. As an example, objectively, this has pretty much the best display on the market. 120 Hertz refresh rate, Quad HD plus resolution, both available at the same time. And it's basically the brightest, most vibrant AMOLED panel that is currently available. It's incredibly smooth when flicking through social media and gaming. And to be honest, and I posted this on Twitter, this display really puts the iPhone 12 series to shame. With the animations taking full advantage of that higher than 60 Hertz refresh rate technology, I've used both phones and for display, I choose the Samsung phone every time. It just feels snappier and almost a generation above. But subjectively, it might not be right for you. At 6.8 inches, it might subjectively be too big. The sheer size and the smooth sloped curved edges at the rear mean it's not great for one-handed use and I often feel like I'm trying my best to bring back the juggling routine I sometimes tried to teach myself as a kid and spoiler alert, I'm not that great at juggling. And on that note, dear smartphone manufacturers, can we please start offering our highest end, most feature rich phones in smaller sizes as well? Because currently if I want to use the best from any brand, it seems to me I have to buy one that was basically built for BFG. Don't cut features just because you're making the phone smaller. It's not fair for us non gigantic hand people. <laughs> Rant over. And the other things to consider are, of course, you may prefer a fully curved display, which you don't now get, or you may prefer a fully flat display as opposed to the kind of halfway house that we have here with the S21 Ultra. I personally am not mad keen on it being a halfway house. I think I would prefer it to be one or the other. But again, you may like this. You need to decide on what's important for you personally, and this runs right through the phone as a whole including the camera. Objectively, it has an incredible camera. The second gen 108 megapixel primary sensor is capable of insane levels of detail, brilliant dynamic range, and the speed of processing is really good. You can now not only use the ultra wide angle lens for its intended purpose, but also for macro shots as well. And again, it's really good. Samsung have taken the ideas, what they tried to achieve with the S20 Ultra, and just refined it and made it work. As an example, you now have a three times optical zoom lens and a 10 times periscope lens. And the seamless transitions between them over the zoom ranges is super smooth now. And right the way through to the max 100 times zoom is really steady. 
And yes, you can still say that the 100 times zoom isn't the most clear still. And I don't want pictures of the moon. But to be fair, at 30 and 50 times, it's still incredible for what you can get on a smartphone right now. And the fact that I can get this picture right here is amazing, subjectively. Autofocus and low light performance has also been improved. And I would say for probably 90% of anyone looking to buy a phone right now, this is probably the best camera for you. But you may fall into that 10% of which we'll touch on. Portrait mode, for example. For standard portrait shots where the target is stationary, the S21 Ultra is probably the best available. Sharp, nice color temperature, and pretty great edge detection. But, and again I repeat, in real world use, the sort of shots that you'd be looking to possibly take that doesn't often get represented in tech reviews, which all seem a little bit mechanical to me. If your subject is moving, if you're taking pictures of your children or your pets, for example, which is probably maybe more than 50% of what most people use portrait mode for, you'll know that often there's a lot of movement in a shot. And the Samsung S20 Ultra, like many Samsungs before, like pretty much any smartphone manufacturer on the market outside of Google and the Pixel line, they don't tend to do so well here. And often you can have slightly soft focus on the area that you want nice and sharp, and it just looks a bit meh. So as a result, you often have to take three or four different shots to try and nail the focus nice and sharp and then the blurred background at the same time. And sometimes you don't get that opportunity and you may miss the shot altogether. On top of that, there are even more subtle differences between certain brands and their smartphone cameras that may make you want to choose one over the other. Something as simple as color. I often do polls on Twitter and Instagram, sometimes posting Samsung shots alongside iPhone ones, for example, and often get such a difference of opinion. While I personally look at the S21 Ultra selfie here alongside the iPhone 12 Pro one and think the clear winner in terms of accurate, cooler colors and naturally portraying the scene is the Samsung phone, many people would argue the iPhone shot looks the best. So again, subjectivity is key. You may prefer one thing over another in terms of specific styles or features in the cameras. Side note, while we're on features, video is excellent front and back, 8K options, super steady, great dynamic range, and the new video modes like director's view and the updated single take are really fun additions and pretty useful to use, as are the pro modes if you want that added control over the end product. I personally don't really have a massive need to use those additional software features, but again, you might. And now we're on software, let's check in on what Samsung are doing. Well, we've of course got Samsung's One UI 3.1 over the top of Android 11. Samsung have never been the most clean or simple when it comes to their software, but if you love a device teeming with features, then this is perfect. One-handed features with the ever-growing display sizes are again a focus, as is the idea of connectivity, with pairing to the latest TVs, monitors and laptops an absolute breeze. Wirelessly using the deck software is also really, really handy, connecting up to my new Samsung monitor, which I reviewed uh, a day or so ago, and it just feels like it's getting better and better. I still don't get, really, the S Pen compatibility here. I think if you want to use a pen with a Samsung phone, it, you just buy a Note phone. Am I the only one that doesn't doesn't get it? It's fundamentally the same phone. You just have the pen integrated into the phone. A lot more easy to use, surely, than have it on the edge of a case. Makes the phone even bulkier. I, I don't know. Tell me in the comment section below if you want a Galaxy S phone and want to use that pen compatibility and why you wouldn't choose a Note phone I'd love to know because, like I said, I, I maybe I'm missing something here. One thing I'm not missing is a top front-firing speaker. I have absolutely no problems with the stereo sound coming out of this bad boy, and part of it is coming from under the display at the top. And yeah, sound is really, really good. It's also, as you would expect, IP68 water and dust resistant. You have fast wireless and wired charging. You have up to a kajillion gigabytes of RAM. It's not true. There's enough, there's a lot there. Max of 16 gigabytes if you didn't know already, but storage may be an issue for some of you. We've touched on it in our previous videos on this phone. We have a max of 512 gigabytes, which is completely fine, expensive when you add that on, but still, I think more than enough. But now Samsung are dropping yet another feature, and that is 
the micro SD card slot. I know a lot of you guys were first annoyed about the headphone jack. They've now double whammied with the no charger in the box and no micro SD card slot as well. Let me know in the comments if that is a deal breaker for you because it may subjectively make this phone not great for you. Maybe we should have done a drinking game. Every time I say the word subjectively, you have to take a, no? <laughs> I'm not advocating alcohol. It could be water, it could be orange squash. So the S21 Ultra is ridiculously good, but I, I've decided that I cannot say it's the best phone out there right now because best for who? It depends what you like. There's so much toxicity on social media about Samsung being better than Apple and Google and Huawei and vice versa because what somebody finds great in one phone is incredibly subjective. One person adores what another person really dislikes, but I think we need to just take a step back and say, you know what? Let it be. Take a scout around the market, be informed in the decisions you want to make, but at the end of the day, buy what you like and what you can afford. And don't worry if somebody dislikes that opinion. And certainly don't try and force your opinion on somebody else because it's just not very nice, is it? <laughs> objectively, and I'll say this one more time, I promise. Objectively, if you want an Android phone with probably the most features and highest specs currently right now, then this is it. And if you have the £1,150 slash dollars or whatever it is, whatever it starts at on you, then feel free to go and get it. If you don't have that sort of money or you don't necessarily like the size of it, for example, and not massively keen on the added extra camera features that you get with the Ultra, I'd maybe look at the standard S21 or S21 Plus because they're smaller, have very similar features, and I actually think probably look better as well. Let me know what you think of the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Are you going to go and get it? Are you going to get the S21, the S21 Plus, or another phone altogether? Drop a like if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Share it if somebody you know is looking to possibly buy it or looking for a phone and doesn't know whether to get it or not. Subscribe and turn on your notifications if you love everything tech, unboxings, news, reviews. I love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Says BYT. Peace out.